Hello, God bless you, and welcome to another midweek refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, and your host for the Midweek Refill. As always, we are excited and delighted to share this teaching opportunity with you. Please like, share, subscribe, and let others know that we are here for them with another fresh word from the Lord. So in the comments, please let us know where you are viewing from. We're so excited to welcome you to this week's episode of the Midweek Refill. And of course, this week we are continuing with our current series, which is teaching about trusting God with your entire life. Trusting God with your entire life. This is part three of this four-part series. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about trusting God with your finances. Now, hold up. Don't touch that dial. I know that many people hate it when the church talks about finances. So let's talk about faith instead and what it really means and how we really express and experience faith with God as the center of our heart. Because, you know, the scriptures teach us that we're our treasure ears, there will our heart, heart also be. So think beyond just another teaching about money. Think about a teaching about the heart, because when we give, giving emanates from a heart that is right towards God. And so why is it important for us to trust God with our finances? I'm glad you asked. That's an awfully good question. Well, to begin with, trusting God with our finances is a foundational aspect of our stewardship. You know what stewardship is? It is when you are responsible for that which belongs to another individual. You know, I believe it's Psalm 24 that says, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You and I, friends, don't own anything. The very hairs on our head are numbered, and God is the one who owns it all. Instead, you and I have been entrusted and equipped and empowered with the awesome privilege of stewarding what God has placed in our hands for our lifetime. As a steward, we are responsible to take care of that which God has loaned us, if you will, as if it was our own, but with a mindset toward pleasing God, who is the creator, sustainer, and provider of it all. So in this week's teaching, I want to provide you with four biblical reasons, totally based on the scriptures, as to why Christians should trust God with their finances. All right, so make sure you got your Bible handy. Go and get your notepad. And don't forget, you can check the link below. The description below, you'll find a link for today's teaching. It's a free PDF handout. Won't cost you anything. So let's move into reason number one why we must trust God, not only with our entire lives, but also with our finances. It's because, number one, God is the ultimate provider. God is the ultimate provider. Again, everything we have belongs to God. Everything we have comes from God. Everything we have is protected by God. You and I are just the ones who are holding it for God during our lifetime and maybe even for certain seasons of our lives. That's why we have to take care of that which belongs to God, which is everything in our possession. Because we don't provide for ourselves. God is our ultimate provider. I want to go back and revisit a passage of scripture I shared with you in the last episode. And let's look at how God indeed is the ultimate provider. For the Bible teaches us in Matthew chapter 6, and verse number 26, 
from the NIV translation. Jesus says there, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more than they? This passage of scripture is so wonderful because it reminds us that God literally is the ultimate provider. He provides not only for us, but for the birds. And if you read Matthew 6, he provides for the lilies of the field. He provides for the sun and the moon and the skies and everything is the provision of God. He takes such good care, not only of us, but of all of his creation. And so this verse emphasizes that if God, in fact, takes care of the birds, he will surely provide for us his beloved children. So recognizing him as the ultimate provider, it shifts our perspective from being self-reliant, which means that we depend on our own selves to provide for ourselves to actually being God-reliant, which means we recognize that we own nothing, but we are responsible for that which has been placed in our hands because ultimately all that we have comes from the God who provides. And I love Matthew 6. It's such an amazing chapter. I want to challenge you to read it this week along with your study and meditation time. You know, Matthew 6, 33 is a very popular verse that many people know. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the authority, the rule, and the reign of God. And his righteousness, which means God's way of doing things. And then all of these other things, T-H-I-N-G-S, will be added unto you. You know what things he's talking about there? He's talking about all the things that he's already talked about in Matthew 6, which is clothing, food, shelter, a day of oxygen. All of it comes from God. And when we trust God with all that we have, we get all that God has for us. Because God is the ultimate provider. We are the stewards of that which God places into our hands Therefore, we must trust God with our entire lives and with our finances. Because remember, again, we don't want to be self-reliant. To rely on yourself is like having nothing to rely on at all. We need God to provide. And so when we give to God, we are showing our need, our necessity, and our passion and our love for God. So number one, we must honor God with our substances, our finances, because God is the ultimate provider. Now, you know, you may think of your job as your source, but friends, your check is only a resource. And resources can come and go in the middle of a sentence. But God is the source who provides every resource. And by the way, If you happen to lose a resource, God can resource. Watch this. Re means to do it again. So when you trust God, even if you lose a resource, God can do it again. God can provide another way of making the ends meet. And that leads me to our second point. So not only number one is God the ultimate provider, but let's look at number two. Number two, God's plans are not to, God's plans are to prosper and not to harm. God's plans for your life are to prosper you and not to harm. You know, in uh, the little epistle of third John, John there is writing a letter to a new convert who is his spiritual son. His name is Gaius. And he says there in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And there John gives a threefold 
blessing wish for Gaius that you and I can really apply to our lives when we think about that word prosper. He says, it is my wish for you that you prosper, that you be in health, but even as your soul prospers. So as John was speaking to Gaius and saying, I want to see you prosper financially. I want to see you prosper physically, but I also equally importantly, want to see you prosper spiritually. So God's plans for our life is to prosper us and never, ever, ever to bring us harm. But let's look at what the scripture says concerning this second point. Very familiar passage of scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11, and I think we talked about this one a bit last week. So let me just go back and highlight it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God's plans for your life, even concerning your finances, are not to harm you. It is not for you to run out. It's not for you to be low. It's not for you to be out. No, quite to the contrary. God does not mean you any harm as it relates to receiving gifts from you. God means you well. And God's plans for your life are to bring you a place of fatness. When you think about the word prosper, uh, the word anointing has to do with uh, fatness, not fat in terms of obesity, but a richness, uh, a thickness of, pro of prosperity. That's what God wants to do in your life. If you will trust him with your finances and with every area of your life. So God's plans for you are not to harm you in any way, but only to bring you nothing but prosperity in your life. How many of you could use prosperity in your finances? Well, trust God with your finances and then God will show you his faithfulness in your life because his attentions again are not to harm you. We are his children and he loves us. His children are always his first concern for their welfare. So trusting God with finances means believing that he will guide us towards financial decisions, toward opportunities that will align with our good and his will. God has an amazing and uncanny way of lining things up that you don't even see. That God will put you together with the right situations, the right people in your life, the right deal, the right business opportunity, whatever it may be, to make sure that you're good. Because God works all things together for our good. Don't you just love God for that? So number one, we must trust God with our finances, number one, because God is the ultimate provider. Number two, God's plans are to prosper and not to harm us. Well, number three, the blessings of faithfulness is another reason why we must trust God with our finances. I want to share with you from Malachi chapter three, around verse eight, nine, and 10. Malachi was written to priests who were literally uh, sabotaging the best gifts that should have belonged to God. And it's an outcry for pure, wholehearted, full worship, which includes giving God our best in terms of financially and our possessions. So Malachi chapter three, God speaking here says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Now tithe, of course, is the first tenth of your earnings. And God says, bring it all into the storehouse. Here's the reason, there may be food in my house. And here God says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not room enough to store it up. 
What a powerful verse that is. It is a promise. It is the blessing, if you will, that comes from being faithful in our tithe and offering to God. Now, God's intention towards his children, again, is for our welfare, for our upbuilding, for our upkeep. And yet he gives us this opportunity to share with him. And notice that he only asked for a tithe. That's 10%. Well, what do I do with the 90%? You take care of your necessities. The 10% is a way of sharing with God and showing God that he is first, foremost, and premier in your life. God takes that 10% and ensures the 90 that you're left with. God has a way of canceling debt. He has a way of making sure that you have every resource you need. God has a way of making things stretch. And when you give God that 10%, he can take that 90% and allow you to stretch it farther than if you had had the whole 100%. Because he is that kind of God and he blesses faithfulness. That's why he says, bring it. So not just once, but bring it continuously. The whole time that speaks to faithfulness and bring it into the storehouse. And God says to us, if we will be faithful at doing that, he will be faithful at outpour, at giving us whatever it is that we need and more than we can imagine. That's the promise of God from Malachi chapter number three. So here's number four, and I hope that you're getting something out of this teaching. Number four, why we must trust God with our finances and every area of our lives is because true security is found in God and not in wealth. Let me repeat that again for you. True security is found in God, not in wealth. So your security is not found in your stocks, bonds, your uh, various investments in collateral. Your security is not in what you have gone out and done. Your only security is really in God because everything comes from him. And so every blessing we have comes from him. Without him, we would not have what is in our hands. Therefore, we must understand that true security is only found in God. It's not in holding on to that which you have earned. So let's look at what the word of God says as it relates to this fourth principle. So the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 5, they NIV translation, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So here the writer is telling us that our love must be directed properly. We cannot love things and love money and love possessions and love wealth, our love must be channeled directly towards the one who gives us life and love and peace and joy and wealth and health. And that's God. So keep your lives free from the love of money, the writer says, and be content with what you have. Now, let's talk about that for a minute because a lot of people have taken that verse to mean that we should only wear old clothes and that we should drive the same car for 45 and 45 years, six months, three weeks, and two days until the wheels fall off. That's not what it's saying. It's saying don't find your contentment, which means your joy, your peace, your happiness, your everyday satisfaction in things. You know why? Things burn up, things tear up, Things get stolen up, swiped up, picked up, snatched up. But God would never be 
taken from you, stolen from you, break down on you, none of those things. So if your contentment is in that new television and that's where you find all your joy, what will you do when the lights go out or the TV breaks down or God forbid somebody breaks in and, and decides they want your TV? What will you do then? So if your contentment is in that car and you know that's your entire joy in life, what will you do when that thing breaks down or when you can't afford the payment on it and you've got to, well, you know how that can go. What will you do then? See, our joy cannot be in things nor even in people. That's why the writer says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Now he breaks down what we have. So he's not saying that we should never go buy something new. You want to do something for yourself after you've given God his tithe and offering and after you've paid your bills and after you've put away something for savings and that kind of thing in rainy day. Yes, you should do something for yourself sometimes. God's not asking us to take a vow of poverty, but here's what he's really saying here. What do we have? Well, God says, you have me. That's why he says, for God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And what a powerful promise that is to receive from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that no matter what comes and goes and who comes and goes and the ebbs and flows of life, we have a consistent God who will always be there to make sure we have everything we need. That's what we have. That's where our contentment must lie, my brothers and sisters. So we have to understand that wealth and possessions can be fleeting, they can be unstable, but God's presence and the support that he offers us is unchanging. So trusting God with finances means really recognizing the true security that we find in him and not in the accumulation of material things, more creature comforts. No, don't be so fixated on creature comforts. But if you have to have a focus, it ought to be on the creator and not the creature comfort. And that's what Hebrews 13 and 5 is telling us. So by simply placing our trust in God with our finances, listen, we're not just making a statement about money, but we're really expressing a deeper faith in God's character and his promises to take care of his children. When you give to God of your tithe, your offering, your seed and your overflow, you are really making a statement about your faith in him and his ability to keep his word and his ability to watch over you and your children's children. Hey, I wanna challenge you. Make sure that you go down into the description below and get the free PDF. It's gonna have discussion questions on it where you can dive deeper and apply this word to your life. Share it with a friend. Get somebody on the phone and do your own little Bible check-in where you guys discuss the questions from this teaching. I love you so much. And I'm praying that you will trust God in every area of your life, including your finances, and be a good steward of all God has placed in your hands. Well, listen, Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to join us right here at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday morning for a live worship experience that can change your life. And join me next week for the midweek re- midweek refill. Well, until next week, this is Bishop A. Reginald Littman. You go with God.